everybody! This is chapter 3 in our vlog of uh, reading Bluebird, Happy Unicorns, Rainbows, and Bluebirds of Happiness. So, here we go. Chapter 3. Hmm. Suffer Children. Hmm. Why is your body dominated by fear? Is it because the coming of our son is near? A man with long gray hair said as he stood in front of a mirror inside of a mostly empty room in his basement, which was lit entirely with a handful of candles on his wooden shelves. He was wearing a dark blue mask and a black robe, which covered the remainder of his body below his neck. A younger woman wearing a similar robe and mask with blonde hair spoke to the man as she stood beside the wooden door that leads into the room. Is our son's visit a blessing or a curse? I know that this situation will evolve into something worse. It's the most interesting thing I've observed in a while. How long do you, how long do you think they remain in denial? The woman placed her hand on the blue doorknob. Master, may I unlock the door? I think that soon we may have a visitor. The man nodded his head as he stared at his reflection in the mirror. You sense what I sense, and that is good. It means you are progressing the way that you should. Open the door and we'll greet our friend. One of us will be dead by the time the night ends. You don't need to worry. You're not going to die. When my corpse hits the floor, you have my permission to cry. The gray-haired man said to the woman who nodded her head as she turned the doorknob and unlocked the door. She then moved her body away from the door quickly and stood in a corner of the room. Forgive me. Forgive me. If I shed a tear, in a few seconds our son will appear. You say that he will end your life. How will he do it? With a gun or a knife? The woman asked the man whose expressions reigned stoic. Do not worry, little one, the man started to say. But he was interrupted by the sound of the door swinging open. <laughs> The man and woman turned their heads to see a man wearing a bright red trench coat that matched his bright red hair standing in the doorway. The man was fairly short. He was holding a pistol in his left hand, and his coat was stained with blood, which blended in with his shirt's color perfectly. Hello, shitheads. You would not believe the day I've had, the man said with a crazed smile as he started to walk towards the gray-haired man. I was driving home from a long day of work when suddenly I get stopped by a really stupid pickpucker. Please stop referencing police officers using that word. I find it to be distasteful and absurd, the old man said to the younger man who rolled his eyes. God damn it, you're rhyming as shit. I can't fucking stand it, the man said with a laugh as he held his pistol against the man's head. Anyways, the pig fucker found a fucking baby in the back of my car. Not just any baby either. A fucking mutated baby who had apparently been ripped out from some poor girl's belly with magic or some shit. Can you tell me what the hell was that about? The man growled as he held the finger on the trigger of his pistol. The gray haired man shrugged in response. I wish I could give you the answers you desire, but I, the man, but I. The man pulled the trigger of his pistol and the older man fell to the ground <sighs> before he was given the chance to finish his sentence. The younger man stood over the body of the older man and chuckled before he threw his pistol to the other side of the room. My finger slipped, the man said to himself before he started to walk towards the door. Killing my master gives you satisfaction, but within the next hour you will regret your action. The woman said quietly as she stared at the man with eyes filled with hatred. The smile on the man's face was replaced with a frown as he stepped through the door frame. Shut up, ma'am, the man said as soon as he was out of earshot of the woman. He sighed as he walked up the stairs of the old house where he had spent his childhood. Once he reached the first floor of, the, of his house and was standing at the front of the door, he reached out to grab the doorknob. You could have been a great seer if you had tried. You know what will happen if you step outside. A pale, transparent vision of the old man said as he appeared behind the man in the entranceway. 
The man sighed as he placed his hand on the doorknob. Why did you kill that girl's sister? And why did you let her children and her love lover live? The man asked the ghost, who stared at him with a stoic expression on his face. His sister and you both need to die. I have much to teach you in the afterlife, the ghost said to the man who chuckled as he turned the doorknob. It's already the feminine rhymes. Eh, that's fucking sad, the man said with a chuckle as he pushed the door open and stepped outside of his house, only, be, only to be immediately pushed back inside by what appeared to be a brightly lit ball of red magic. You can't stop murdering people, can you? First my sister, then that officer, now that old man. What the hell is wrong with you? A young girl with white wings, pink hair, and a pink tail said to the man who was lying on the floor at the house's entranceway. Back off, the man said with a smile as he raised both of his middle fingers. You're sick. You need psychological help. You were just talking to yourself. I heard you admit that you killed my sister. The girl said to the man as she walked closer to him. The man chuckled to himself as he faced the ghost of his father, who was standing behind the girl. I was talking to ghost to my dear old dad, the man said to himself as the girl grabbed him and lifted him off the ground. You're even crazier than I thought. Ghosts are real. But you have better hope that I'm wrong. The girl said, as she said coldly as she re released him from her grip and allowed him to fall on her horn. I know they're real, the man said. He, saw, he smiled as the... Blood draped from his body, and his spirit freed himself from the corpse and floated beside his father. If you start rhyming, I swear I'm gonna kill you again! The man said bitterly to his father, who chuckled as he watched the girl as she walked out of his former home. Once she had walked to the end of the driveway, she spread her wings and took flight into the night. They deserve to die. People like them deserve all the pain and suffering they receive. The girl said as the wind blew into her face and tears flowed out of her eyes as she flew through the night air. She could hear dogs barking as she flew over them, and she absentmindedly wondered if the dogs could smell the blood on her body and knew what she had done. Monsters. They're all monsters. They don't deserve to live anymore. But it's not their fault. The girl started to muse to herself as she flew into the window of her bedroom and landed on a, in a kneeling position on her bed. It's this fucking poisonous world, this poisonous society that's to blame for what they did. It's this poisonous world that has to be blamed for what I did. The girl said to herself as she pushed her long sleeve white shirt over her head threw it onto the floor. The white shirt was given to her by her father as a gift. It had a picture of her and her sister hugging each other on the front of the shirt. On the back of the shirt was a URL address for her lovingsisters.com, which was a website that her father owned and managed. Oh, fuck this world! It deserves one of her horrible fate but seems. The girl continued to talk to herself as she pulled down her bloodstained jeans and tossed them to the ground along with her shirt. She lay down on her bed wearing only the pink panties and the pink bra that her sister had loved to see her wear when she had been alive. You look so pretty tonight, a quiet female voice said from a darkened corner of the girl's bedroom. The girl immediately sat up in her bed and looked towards the corner of the room, where the person who had spoken was currently standing. Are you watching me undress? The girl asked, and the owner of the voice chuckled as she remained hidden by the darkness. I've watched you sleep every chance that I've gotten. I've watched you and dreamed of the day that I could be the one to sleep beside you, to make those videos with you instead of your sister. The owner of the voice said as she stepped out of the corner. Her yellow and red hair was illuminated by the moonlight, along with her blue pajama shirt. You watched my father's videos? The girl asked the mysterious young girl, who looked as though she was four years younger than her, the yellow and red haired girl nodded her head as she stepped closer to the bed. I found no 
stopping you. When I saw those videos, I've wanted to meet you for so long. I convinced my parents to move here just so I could be close to you. Now I am. And you're everything I had hoped you would be. The strange girl crawled on top of the girl's bed and smiled. My name is Sarah, the girl said. The girl on the bed stared blankly at the girl who she could now identify as Sarah. My name is Cynthia, the girl said. Sarah smiled as she leaned towards the girl and quickly kissed her on the cheek. I know. I know that your sister's name is Lucinda. I also know that your terrible father makes you film those horrible pornographic videos. Why does he feel the need to use the love that you feel for him and your sister to film those videos and post them online? Sarah asked, and Cynthia involuntarily shuddered as she remembered the videos that her father had filmed. The fact that he had filmed himself claiming her virginity at the age of nine disgusted her. But she could not bring herself to truly hate her father despite what he had done. Instead, she hated the seven million people who have watched the video and allowed it to remain online. Are you alright, my love? Sarah asked Cynthia, whose face had started to become damp blue due to the fresh tears that started rolling down her face. Cynthia quickly used her right arm to wipe the tears from her face. I'm not alright. This fucking world is poisoned me and my father. He killed my sister and took my children away from me. I don't want to live in this world anymore. Cynthia said through sobs as Sarah wrapped her arms around the ground and captured her in a hug. Everything will be all right, Sarah whispered softly into Cynthia's ear as she started to gently rub her hands along the girl's back while she continued to sob. Cynthia's wings hung limply on her back, and occasionally the girl would run her fingers along her feathers. I'll cast a magic spell and you fall asleep. I promise that when you wake up, you will be happy, and you will never have a reason to cry again. Sarah said to the girl who continued to remain in the embrace of the younger girl. I deserve to be happy. I killed two men tonight, and one of them did not deserve to die. He had someone who loved him, and they killed him before her eyes. I got angry. Cynthia growled as she pushed the girl away from her. We'll bring him back. I can create a perfect world for us. When nobody gets murdered, and nobody is despised by their family, for whom they decide to love, I just need your help. Sarah said to the girl as she sat on the bed a few inches away from Cynthia. The girl growled at her and opened her mouth to speak, but was cut off when the yellow and red haired girl placed her hand on her mouth to silence her. Sleep with me, and I'll cast a magic spell upon you when you wake up. May our magic will have transformed the world into the paradise that you deserve. The girl said as she smiled and gently pushed the girl's face, causing her body to fall backwards. Uh, I don't think I'm ready to have sex so soon after Lucinda's death, Cynthia said to herself as the girl started cuddling with her body as she laid down beside her. Don't worry, I just want to cuddle. I've been waiting for the opportunity to touch you. To feel your body against mine so long. I can't wait any longer. I can wait any longer, the girl said as she gently kissed the cheek of the older girl. Sleep well, my darling. Hmm. That's nice. <sighs> Phil? <sighs> Jeez, what a terrible father he was. Oh well, that's it for chapter 3. Stay tuned next time for chapter 4. Thank you, and thank you for your continued support. Have a good time.